Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to a nice, sedate, at least here, uh, Saturday afternoon, evening, morning, wherever it happens to be for you in the world right now. I am, of course, ELH, your illustrious Game Master, Mind Flayer, and Black Hole Enthusiast. And today, we are going to be checking out a fun little game that I saw on Steam quite by happenstance called Vampire Therapist. And if you are anything like me, when you hear the word Vampire Therapist, you think to yourself, okay, vampires, I get that, but therapist in relation to vampires, how, how, how does that work? But it seems to be a voice acted visual novel it seems to have a good number of bigger voice acting names. For example, Matthew Mercer is in this game. Which, you know, if Mercer's in the game, that either means that it's really good, or it's a good passion project. Though, one thing I will say, for anybody who wants to stick around and watch, since this is a therapy game, that uh, there probably will be some heavier themes, Probably will be some heavier content, so this is kind of your content warning, viewer discretion is advised. And if this does make it to YouTube, which in case, hello YouTube, uh, I probably will have to do a number of uh, trigger warnings just to be on the safe side. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly say hello to everybody, and then we'll dive right in, because I'm eager to see what this is all about. So first things first, uh, hello Orfish, hello hello, Zalkova, afternoon. Kern, hello, hello. And yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm not sure if we're going to do the entire game in one sitting. It's probably going to be something where we maybe do maybe about one and a half to two hours, depending on how much we're liking the game. And then we'll just sort of make this something we do uh, every once in a while, or depending on how people like it, we'll just sort of keep, keep doing it on the regular. But yeah, let me uh, boot up the game here, and we'll get started. OBS! There you go, OBS. Good job. Alright. Yeah, we already got some nice ambience going on. We got some classical records playing in the background. We've got a fireplace going on. Very much a, an ambient game. But let's just jump right in and, and see what happens. Vampire Therapist is a comedy game about the immortal undead processing historical yet personal traumas. References to historical violence and oppression may be upsetting to some. This game was developed in consultation with licensed therapists, but should not be considered a substitute for therapy. Unless you're a vampire. Okay. My name is Sam Walls, and I'm a dead man. Well, kind of dead at least. See, I'm a vampire. Now, if you think that means all that Dracula hooey, like hissing, wearing skin-tight leather, and hunting mortals for sport, I wouldn't blame you one bit. That's exactly the sort of thing I did in my younger years with my former gang. And let me tell you, a vampire who's good with a gun can be a real terror. I got lucky, though. I met some kind mortals who saw beyond my fangs. They taught me my letters and showed me how my thinking was keeping me from finding any kind of peace. After they passed on, I roamed America's majestic wilderness for yeah, the fact that this is a years, Western vampire. I'm loving what it already. means to be a like, vampire. This is this is amazing. And I found revelation. What I realized was it ain't fangs that make us monsters. It's the self-defeating ways we think. Anywho, as the world started getting smaller, my old vampire gang tracked me down. <laughs> them being my kin, I wanted to help them see the world like I did. But they still have the same monster mindset I used to have. Good thing I'm a quick draw. But I got hooked up with this newfangled internet thing and found a vampire who's helping my kin find their way. A fella named Andromachos, supposed to be 3,000 years old. He invited me to come out to Europe to learn from him. I figure someone older than time has got to have the answers. I'm going on a trip, I guess. This feels like my opportunity to do some good in the world. I've been looking, and now it's time to give back. Yeah. Again, Vampires cowboy vampire. Or at least, they don't have to be. And come hell or high water, I'm going to prove it to them. Yeah, I was going to say, the fact that uh, we had a uh, Windows 95 computer with a cowboy vampire, like, that is just... 
How does one come up with this? Uh, well, I think this is the address. Number 27, uh, Clean Flitter Mouse Stream. There you go, Sam. Good job. That's exactly how I would have pronounced it as well. In fact, I'm going to give it a shot. Klein Flitter Mostrab. It's mouse and then Strab. Or Strass. It's Strass. <laughs> oh, vampire therapist, your depression is caused by too much blood. Let me fix that. Now, Caspian, you make that joke, but I have a feeling that's going to actually be the case. But let's keep going. Let's. Sure is a hell of a lot of ruckus for this time of night. People stay up late here. Wait, is that literally what it's what it means, Petrus? I mean, I believe it. Little Flying Mouse Street? You know what? That is that is a choice. Okay. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. These folk are vampires. Better watch myself. Uh good nobbin', folks. Spreaking the English? Spreaking the English? <laughs> Ya yeah, hello, Alta. Are you here to party with us at the hottest club? Ya yeah, hello, Alta. Oh my god. So, I already know that these two definitely going to be, like, turbo goth, turbo, like, just looking at them. Like, they're looking for a third. Already we know. They're looking for a third. And it doesn't matter, man, woman, in between, whatever. They want a third. You can just get that vibe from these people. I must say, I love, I love the the leather. I love the the black. Just these are hot goths. That's what these are. These these are hot goths. Oh, here we go. Uh, tell them you heard a party. Ask about the dress code. Ask about Andro Machos. Ask about the club. Uh, I think we have to ask about the dress code. See if uh, we're really out of place here. I don't think what I'm wearing will fit the dress code. The cowboy look is totally sexy, but you will get a bit sweaty. Okay, Reinhardt. Reinhardt, hold on. Hold on. Reinhardt. How is it that cowboys will get sweaty, but you, in all black, in leather, are going to not get sweaty? Just, just think about that for a second, Reinhardt. Th think, of, think, think, of, think about that for a second. I hope we will all get a bit sweaty. See, Maxi gets it. Maxi already love Maxi. Maxi, good character, love it. Maxi, yes, love it. Good thing we run a little on the cold side, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, my nibbling. We make each other warm. They're looking. For, no, like, there's no way they're not looking for a third at this point. There's no way. There's, if they if they do not have that going on, I will be amazed. I, I will be completely amazed. Heinhardt, stop. Don't scare the American. I want to do that. Okay. Okay, Maxi. I mean, okay. Maxi leaves schnurz on naughty tonight. No, you are the naughty one. Yep, and they're just doing this out in front of the club where everybody can see. Mm -hmm. Yup. Oh, I definitely ain't an American no more. Yep, right there with you, Sam. Alright, uh... Looks like we get to go through all of these, so let's ask about the club. Well, what's so special about this club? Immernacht is the greatest club aller Zeiten. The owner makes sure everyone has a good time. If anyone acts without respect, they are banned from the club forever. You are free to do and be whatever you like. As long as you are harming no one. And I hear that they are now attracting sexy old cowboys. <laughs> Maxi, calm down. We just met. Maxi, control the thirst. Shh, Maxi. He is old enough to be your grandfather. She's going to be still into it. Oh, come on now. You're just flattering me. I'm only a couple hundred years old. Oh, my God. He is so cute, Reinhardt. Can I keep him? She's a vampire. She always thirsts. Ten points to Petrus. Just, just ten points to Petrus. All right. Well, this is obviously the the advancing thing. The guy we're here to see. But we're gonna. I'm, you know what? Let's tell them we're here to party. I can cut loose. What kind of party is this? It's a kind where we dance all night and get sexy. 
I don't know what I was expecting. I mean, that just, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, Reinhardt, I get what you're going through. You're okay, yeah. Oh, we're them kind of vampires. <laughs> <laughs> you're those kind of vampires. Oh, I love that. I just, I love that there's already stereotypes of what types of vampires there are. I love it. Ach so, there are better things to suck than blood, oder? Sorry, I just I have to process what he just said for a moment. Like, I, I know I made the CBT joke in, in chat, in uh, the, the stream title, but uh, I think Reinhardt might actually be into that. Uh, yeah, that was my reaction too, Sam. Also, we have to get past the bouncer first. If we do not, I'm thinking our night is ruined. Oh, wait a sec. There's something about what she just said. I can feel it. It reminds me of one of my revelations about the funny patterns and the way we vampires think. Okay, so one thing I'm liking what they're doing here is that there is an internal voice, and I don't know if you're catching it. Hopefully the volume is loud enough for you to pick up on it. Um, it is a little bit of reverb, so it's kind of interior, if that makes any sense, which is very good because there's a distinction between the internal voice and the external voice, which is very tricky to do sometimes in sound design, which I love. Well, let's see. One type of thinking I noticed I called hot branding. That's when we brand ourselves with names we can't get rid of. There's high noon mind. That's when we treat a situation like it's a do or die showdown. And there's saloon thinking. That's when we act either helpless or invincible, like we've just drunk a pint of moonshine. I can always check my journal if I need examples. I kept all my notes about the funny ways we vampires think in there. I think I know which one of them funny ways they're thinking in, though. Yeah, based on what we've what they've just said, that's a high noon mind because they're uh well, hold on, compadres. You seem like the kind who can make their own fun. Right, yeah, because they, they're making the oh if we don't get in our night is ruined. Yeah, that, that seems like high noon mind. I don't want to have my own fun. Even Nacht is the only place to be on Friday night. So I think we click high noon mind here. <laughs> Amigos, you're putting too much weight on this thing. It's a nightclub, not a high noon showdown. The night's full of possibilities. Mm, Reinhardt, I don't know what this means, but I like the way the sexy American talks. Okay, Maxie. Okay, all right. This... Okay, so small, small, small sidebar here. Um, I once knew a person like this in high school. Ah. Uh, I may or may not have been into her, and uh, we never were a thing, because I was never in her league, but uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is a thing. This is, uh, this is a thing. You make us think that maybe it is better we haven't gotten into the club, because we are now meeting you. <laughs> hey, if meeting me makes you not better, I'm glad we met. Uh, I really gotta find Andromakos, though. Makos. Andromakos. Okay. You have to get past the bouncer. He decides who gets in and who doesn't. And he hasn't looked halfway all night. Maybe I'll have a little word with him. Excuse me, friend. I hear you're the man to talk to around these parts. So already we can tell that this dude's a vampire. He's probably on Nosferatu. Just based on the fact that he has the ears, the Nosferatu face, and yeah, this dude's a Nosferatu. There's no way he's not. Uh, I'm here to see Andrew Makos. Mm. Oh, good. He speaks and growls. A fun night. Uh oh. Hey, thanks, amigo. You have yourself a fine night, you hear? Cowboy, what about us? Bring them joy, dash their hopes. <laughs> okay, listen, I like Maxi. I'm going to bring them joy. Yeah, sure. They're friends of mine. Have fun, mate. Well, come on, you two. We ain't got all night. Yeah. Dang, awful loud in here. Okay, we got a nice beat going. I might have to turn it down just a little bit here. Let me turn it down. 
add Let me know if that's still good. I, I adjust the volume just a little bit. Though maybe loud is a is a choice here. Come on, my Libba, dance with us. Oh, you kids have fun. I'll catch up with you later. Guitar nation, I'd rather hear a gopher giving birth than this. I better talk to whoever's slinging drinks in this here saloon. They ought to know where Andrew Marcos is. But pardon me, ma'am. Okay, so they did something very cool there where the, the music was really loud on purpose and then they deliberately tone it down when there's an actual like conversation about to happen, which is a really cool sound design choice there. Um, and I'm interested to see because already there's just so much character to this game and we're what five minutes in ten minutes in like let's let's look at the 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 backgrounds here, for example. I mean, yeah, we've got all these bottles of different vintages of what I'm, what I'm thinking of. Uh, probably just gonna be blood, based on the fact that all the drinks here are red, therefore either wine or blood. But yeah, it's kind of like how Neo and Trinity talk in the first Matrix, and they lower the volume so that you can hear them talk. And it's 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 a very cool thing that a lot of games don't do. So anytime I notice something like that, I, I like to point it out. Well, well, look at you. We get a lot of 80s fashion in here, but not usually the 1880s. Um, um, also, hello, Slacker. Um, hi, Crimson. Bark. Bark, bark, bark. Bark, 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 bark. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> oh. Yep, this, this was a good choice. Yep. And listen, she has more belts than a she has more belts than a Kingdom Hearts character, but just the vibe of Crimson, loving it. Yep, that's that's a good character design right there. Also, hello, Great Matter. ELH, did you turn into Choco Jacks for a moment there? Listen, listen. Yes, a little bit, maybe, maybe. Who knows? What can I get you, cowboy? The special's Red Bull and vodka. You down? Down, boy. Down, ELH. Down. Also, Red Bull and vodka. Um, I mean, I've had vodka. I've had Red Bull. But Red Bull and vodka? Is that a good idea? Um, sure. Another drink. Red Bull. Oh, there you go. Good job, Sam. Good job, Sam. You are also choosing healthy life choices. Good job. Good job. I'm actually looking for the owner. Uh, he around tonight? Might be. What do you say your name was? The same wall is begging your pardon. Not quite as many belts as Lulu from Final Fantasy X and uh, X2. Yep, you're not wrong. Sam is wise. <laughs> Sam wise. Yeah, there we go. His, his real name is Sam wise. There we go. The caffeine helps your body process the alcohol quicker. I mean, that makes sense. I never thought of about it that way. I guess that's probably why a Long Island iced tea is also pretty quick through the system. Or not a Long Island iced tea, just a Long Island, I should say. Hmm. Sam Walls, huh? Sam Walls. Ah, okay. I don't think I know anything about a Sam Walls. After all, I'm just a know-nothing bartender. Okay, now that, that's a thing. And let's check our book, because I think that's hot branding. But let's just double check. Uh, cognitive distortions. Oh, Okay. Interesting. So I, I like the fact that they have uh, kind of a handwritten feel here. And they've got examples. And again, there's just, this is a lot of cool things that we have here. But the one we're looking for, I think, is hot branding. Uh, we vampires sometimes call ourselves awful names. I'm a failure. I'm unlikable. It's like burning ourselves with a big old branding iron. Every time we look at ourselves, we'll keep seeing these names. Hot branding is just calling ourselves names that do no good. Examples. I miss that shot. I'm such a Butterfingers. Crying over a horse. You're sappy as hell. That fellow doesn't look like a... Uh, that fellow doesn't like wearing leather. He's only a vampire wannabe. Okay. Hot branding shouldn't be used around goth chicks. Unless you like burn. <laughs> Hey, not all goths are into that. Not all goths are into that kind of a thing. 
All right. So this is definitely hot branding because she's saying a no nothing bartender. That's definitely hot branding. From where I'm standing, I see someone with style and confidence, not just a drink machine. Don't go branding yourself like that's all you are. Don't you go worrying about me, cowboy. The man upstairs warned me you were coming. I was just testing to see if you are who you say you are. Oh, interesting. So that was a test. Tell you what, let me give you something from our special reserve. I don't think you're looking for boots. No, we're, we're looking for blood. Well, thank you kindly, ma'am. I was wondering where the blood was. I met some vampires outside, so I figured this was a vampire club. <laughs> you met some goths, honey. They're here to dance and have fun. You met some goths. Okay. Now, I think we all know that they, they gotta be vampires as well. So all these people are mortals? How do you think the head vampire gets his blood? They can't wait to share it with him. It's a special experience. Huh. I mean, to be fair, even in the world of darkness, to be fair, in the world of darkness, this isn't a World of Darkness title, I should clarify that. But in, in Wad, in Vampire the Masquerade, this is a very common thing where you have a, a goth club, quote unquote, and you have groupies or you have a herd, as it's known. And uh, yeah, this is definitely a thing in uh, in many vampire, vampire literature, vampire uh, games. This is definitely a thing. He's the only real vampire here. Well, him and Bert. Interesting. So Crimson's not a vampire. She's just goth. Okay. Uh, interesting. Bert. Yeah, who's who's Bert? The guy. I'm guessing Bert's the bouncer. You met him already. Bert, shuffle on over here. Yeah. Yep, the vampire. Mm-hmm. Yep, he's a Nosferatu. Knew it. This one's here to see the big guy. Show him upstairs, okay? Have fun, mate. Good luck up there, cowboy. Hope you find what you're looking for. Interesting. Uh, howdy. It's Sam Walls to see you, sir. Uh, the guy who's been sending you all them V-mails. V-mails. Not emails. V-mails. Which is clearly vampire mails, but emails. Okay. All right, I see what you're doing, Sam. Uh, ah, great matter. I do hope that uh, that goes well tonight. Especially, I I do love World War II kind of D-Day stuff. So, hopefully, your one shot goes well tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know who you are, Samuel Walls. You have come here because you believe you can help our kin. So I love the fact that uh, Andro here is in the dark and you can see his eyes are illuminated. That's a very interesting visual choice to introduce him as. The question is, are you first able to help yourself? I would deem Bert a walking breach in the masquerade. Hmm. I mean... We would have to find an image of Bert again, but I don't think he's... I think, I think it's one of those things where you could get away with it. Like, he's not, like, the absolute, like, world of darkness Nosferatu. He's still kind of monstrous, but he's not like, oh my god, that person is so hideous, he's a monster monstrous. Now, that just might be me, think, thinking, you know, he's not that monstrous, but... I what we what we haven't really been told here is what the masquerade is like what is what are the rules here because uh the bartender was mortal and she she knew about vampires so how out are vampires is the question maybe maybe we'll find out uh, well, uh, the question is, are you first able to help yourself? Uh, this is a defeatist mindset. So we're going to go with, I can help myself here. Uh, we're talking old Watt, Grey Matter. I've been fixing myself for more than a century now. I don't think I need help. Then you must prepare to learn a most difficult lesson. We all need help, Samuel. 
I am pleased that you have come to receive mine. Dang, you scared the heck out of me. You must allow an ancient vampire his games. He will play them regardless. Please, sit down. What an absolute pleasure it is okay, to meet so... you at last. I found your messages most intriguing. So that's the thing, Caspian. From what we've been told and what the intro said, Sam was a vampire in the Wild West, and then he eventually learned therapy, and now he's come here to Andro to learn more therapy or practice therapy. So it's a very interesting choice what they're doing with Sam here. Very interesting choice. <laughs> Afraid there ain't much here in the way of intrigue. I'm just a lonesome cowboy looking for answers. You know, I receive emails every day from vampires seeking my help. You are the very first to seek my aid in helping others. This alone makes you intriguing. I I just again V mails. Just that is that is a great pun. <laughs> well dang. I think you're gonna be sorely disappointed when you get to talking to me. I'm just honored you're giving me the time of night. I have unlimited time, Samuel. I am pleased to share some of it with you. Our kind can be rather set in their ways. It is inspiring to see someone so young and eager to learn. Hmm. Interesting. Because if I remember what was said correctly, Andro here is 3,000 years plus old. So that is very interesting. He would be definitely the... Uh, he would probably be the prince if this was Wad. And uh, the fact that he seems to be pretty well adjusted. Yeah, he's doing well for 3,000 elder. Yeah, he's, he's doing pretty good. Yeah. And yeah, I again, Grey Matter, the whole reason I picked this up is because I saw it on a whim. And I was like, yeah, you know, the whole vampire struggling to retain the humanity, the whole vampire therapy. And I was like, you know what? This sounds like a very interesting game. And you know what? Again, we're, what, 15, 20, 30 minutes in? And this, there's just so much character in this game. I don't like my vampires older than pre-Christianity. I mean, you know, it's... It's it's definitely a choice to have a three thousand year old vampire. I'm I'm wondering if we're going to have, um, we're gonna to have to therapy Andro here at some point. Like maybe he's the final person we have to therapy. Who knows? Yeah, well, I wasn't much for learning when I was alive. Just making up for lost time, I guess. <laughs> it sounds as though you have been handling your own life better than most. I was particularly intrigued by these revelations you had while walking in nature. Oh, yeah, them. Well, I give walking the credit. Nothing sorts my thoughts out better. After a few decades, I started seeing patterns in the way we vampires think. Can you explain some of these patterns? I've tried to explain them to other vampires, but uh, it ain't never gone well. I could try, though. I think Andrew's going to be receptive. I, I think... I think Andro is probably going to be like, oh yes, I understand completely. See, we tend to assume certain things just because we've been believing them since we were alive. <laughs> or we decide the world's against us just because we're hungry or tired or something. And when we start tackling problems that ain't real, <laughs> we ain't fixing our real problems. That, that make any kind of sense? All right, so we have to bust open his psyche locks first, Phoenix Wright style. I mean, maybe. I don't know. That could be a thing in this game. Um, but no, so for anybody who's not aware, the main sort of therapy that's going on here and again, this is not a substitute for actual therapy. So if you do see, you know, words of wisdom here, or you do see something that relates to your situation, maybe schedule to talk to a therapist who's trained in CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, but Sam here, as far as all the literature I read about this game before buying, is that Sam is very much a practitioner of such. And my understanding of it is that the core tenant is recognizing certain thought patterns and then redirecting those thought patterns into something more positive. Like for example, when earlier we were doing, oh, that's the high new mind, or oh, that's hot branding, or oh, that's saloon thinking. That's identifying the problem so that you go, oh, I'm thinking like that, I should then think like this. So it's, it's very an interesting way to communicate that concept here. And that the fact that they're making it a compelling visual novel so far is a good thing. Fascinating, Samuel. These revelations that you had in the woods, mortal psychologists have a term for them. 
They are called cognitive distortions. Mm-hmm. Cognitive who's he what now? Who's he what now? Mm. <laughs> cognitive distortions. They are exactly as you described them. I will explain in a moment. Please, tell me about these specific revelations you had. Uh, well, let's talk about hot branding first. See, I used to be in a gang. They were my whole existence. If you asked me who I was, I would have said, I'm a murdering bastard. Mm -hmm. ah, Jira. Ah, Jira Grey Matter. Jira is... I haven't touched Jira in many a year. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things where, you know, once, once you've identified what the problem is and once you begin in CBT... Um, it, it's a good way to self-help and it's a good way to sort of deal with a lot of issues. It's not a, it's not a fix all, you know, CBT isn't going to fix everything, but, um, it is something where CBT is a very powerful tool if you use it correctly. Uh, and you're not wrong, Slacker. It's, you're, you're not wrong where, you know, I deliberately did a play on that in the, uh, in the stream title, but and I'll probably do it on YouTube as well, probably. Um, but it's it's something where, you know, I I feel like most people just don't know CBT as a therapy tool exists. So again, the fact that uh, we're bringing that up in the game is is pretty cool here. Once I got away, I realized how small minded that was. I was Sam before I was a murdering bastard. But that's how I was choosing to brand myself. My old gang's still around, and they're still branding themselves like that. They can't see themselves as anything but killers. Very astute, Samuel. I favor the clinical term, however, which is labeling. Okay, so we're actually changing from the cowboy uh, term for it to the actual term for it, which is labeling. Interesting. You correctly discovered that labeling is a reductive act. When we call ourselves names, even if we find them accurate, we create prophecies we are doomed to fulfill. Hmm. Very powerful, powerful statement there. Hmm. Interesting. For millennia, I thought of myself as a killer. It was not untrue that killing was how I made my way in the world. I was an unstoppable warrior and assassin. But with this label, I limited myself for ages. I did not only kill people, I also killed potential aspirations I might have had. I just wanna I just wanna take a moment here where this is this is a a good example of Actually yeah, Grey Matter, you found the word I was looking for. So there is a philosophy in game design that if you are dealing with a heavy subject like this or you want to teach the viewer, the player something, um, this is what is known as game-based learning. And it is very much a... It's a tricky thing to get right sometimes, especially with the heavy, heavier subject matter. But just let's, let's sort of analyze here what Andrew just said, that because he labeled himself as a killer... He was killing not only people, but at potential aspirations that he might have had. Also, Techno Nerd, hello, hello, welcome on in. So, this is their, their once again, I know, teach learning in a game? What is this? Um, so, they're, they're giving good examples, and they're making these characters compelling, and that gives you more reason to pay attention and more reason to, well, learn, which I love. See whether you can catch me doing some labeling in my next few statements. Okay. I am so old, I am ancient. Uh, yeah, that's... Ooh, you know what? That, uh, that's labeling. Oh, come on. I know you've been kicking around a long time, but don't go labeling yourself as ancient. But according to definition, I am ancient. It is not a label, but a specific classification of my age. Well, you look pretty good for being ancient, then. The secret is moisturizer, but let us continue. Call me whatever you like, but don't call me late for dinner. Okay, so that's that's not anything of these three. How shall I describe myself? Ah, uh, yes, I am a mass murderer. 
Okay, so what we just learned there, and this uh, this was pretty much by accident what I did there. Um, so it looks like we can jump in with, with our choices at any point. And it's very similar to Phoenix Wright, where you, you're interrogating or you're cross-examining, I think is the word they use. And then you do the, the objection or, you know, something of that line. And yeah, I like that system. So this, yes, I am a mass murderer. That's a label. That is high key a label. Well, that's about as clear a labeling as it gets. Uh, yeah, we vampires tend to do a lot of killing, but reducing ourselves to killers ain't doing us any favors. Excellent, Samuel. You are correct. Labels can be cages that we lock ourselves in. I was a mere murderer for most of my existence because that is how I labeled myself. Yeah, I did the same thing. Sam Walls, the murderer, reprobate, and good for nothing. Those are not how I would describe the Sam Walls I see before me. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? Okay, so let's do, let's see what High Saloon Mind becomes in real therapy terms. Well, uh, I noticed how we stress ourselves out by making everything a battle of do or die absolutes. Uh, high noon mind, I call it. Like that feeling you get right before a big shootout. I must confess I have no experience with this feeling. I engaged in Mortal Kombat long before the age of gunpowder. <laughs> yeah, 3,000 years old, that would have been Bronze Age technology. But the sentiment you describe mirrors the words of my old friend, Marky Aurelius. He used to say that the magnitude of life's challenges often turn us into Wait. our worst selves. Oh, hold on, hold on. Aurelius? That Aurelius? I mean, I guess he is old enough. Okay, the fact that he's calling him Marky, though. If Petrus is still here, I know Petrus will have some some choice words about that. Um, you mean Marcus Aurelius, the Roman Emperor? Mm hmm. Of course, his name was Marcus. Marky was a bedroom name. Oh. Oh, Andrew swings that way. Okay. I'm not judging. I'm just surprised that. Okay. Interesting. I mean, it, again, it it makes sense. You know, the Romans were really into that sort of thing. I just, I was not expecting that. Uh, good, good for them. Good for Andrew and good for Marky. Good, good for them. You mean you and the Emperor were? It was ancient Rome. Penetration was similar to a handshake. <laughs> okay, let's just. Okay. All right. I mean, I knew this was coming. I literally just made the joke. Um, there it is. That is okay. All right. That is a sentence, indeed. That 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 is a sentence. I was not expecting to hear or read today. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sam's got this. My apologies. I somehow forgot you were American. <laughs> but let us discuss this high noon mine. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I forgot you were American. I'll, I'll keep things PG. Thank you, Andro. Thank you. Just, just thank you. Oh, yeah. I was gonna say you're either, you're either Pan or your Ace is what I would think after three thousand years. Yeah, like you, you would either be Pan or Ace, and I don't know. Do am I getting an Ace vibe from Andro right now? No, I think I think uh, I think he's still doing some stuff. He strikes me as the type that's still doing stuff. I believe we can broaden your definition. Mortal psychologists call this phenomenon of binary thought polarized thinking, but I like to call it Nosferatu thinking. Okay, Nosferatu. So it's polarized thinking, but we're calling it Nosferatu thinking. Okay. Nosferatu thinking. It means you are thinking in black and white. Oh, okay. Black and white. <laughs> I get it. That's pretty funny. Oh, I get it. Because the original Nosferatu was in black and white. Okay, I see what you did there, game. I see what you did. Okay, I get it. Good job. Good job. I believe it encompasses the breadth of the distortion. One is not flatly weak or strong, good or evil, smart or stupid, a success or a failure. The truth is far more complex and colorful. Not every high noon gunfight ends in oblivion, correct? Yeah, that's true. Uh, getting shot still ain't fun, but it ain't the end neither. A perfect example, Samuel. Now, try to catch me using Nosferatu thinking. I will give you a series of statements, and one of them will contain Nosferatu thinking. 
I will repeat them if you miss it. Okay, so again, the Phoenix Wright style of one of these things you have to object to. I like it. If I do not drink blood, I will surely die. I mean, isn't... Isn't that... That's 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 the immediate one. Is that no sprout dude thinking? Yeah, so it's not because we got a screen shake there, but No, Samuel. In this case, I am not arguing with reality. If we do not drink blood, we die. This is a fact of being a vampire. Let us continue. Death eventually comes for us all. Okay, that's not black and white. That's just a fact of life. Mortals will always fear our kind. That is probably black and white. That's nose for out to thinking right there. I've met mortals who knew who I was and weren't scared. Very good, Samuel. And even if you hadn't, to say mortals will always fear us ends any hope that they might not. Always is such a terminal word, is it not? Would you like to discuss more of your revelations with me? And then yeah, let's do uh, let's do saloon thinking. I realize that as vampires, uh, we can get the feeling of the power that comes with immortality and strength, but then we get hopeless and aimless over time. It's kind of like the fellow you see in the saloon at the bottom of a bottle of whiskey. Either he thinks he can fight everyone, or he's crying into them last drops because he thinks life's hopeless. It's saloon thinking. Two extremes that probably ain't true. A fascinating observation, Samuel. Your saloon thinking was described in my time as the battle between hubris and nemesis, the twin exorcists of arrogance Hello, and self-pity. Also, tick down. Hello, Interesting. Oh, man. It made me wish I'd gotten some schooling. Maybe I would have figured this stuff out earlier. You live forever, my friend. There is no rush. What you have identified is a phenomenon where individuals perceive either an illusion of control or a lack of control. Hmm. So an illusion of control or a lack of control. What are they? I, I don't remember the term for it, but I, I'm sure we're going to find out here in a moment. Mortal psychologists call this control fallacy. Yep. Okay. That's what I thought. Control okay. fallacy. Again, very, uh, very interesting thing that uh, we're just sort of dropping in little bits here and there. Rarely do we have complete power over our situations or no power at all. But we create this illusion that stops us from attempting to change our perceived situations. Yeah, you're right about that. I used to think I'd never get away from my gang. And maybe that's what made me stick with them for so long. Yes, you see how cognitive distortions keep us from facing reality, whatever that reality may be. Of course, I am so old and powerful that I am always in control. And that... That... Oh god, is that labeling or Nosferatu thinking? Wait a second, isn't that also control fallacy? Let's 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 consult the book. Hold on. Oh no, I wanted to read the page. Ah, uh, da, 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 da. Control fallacy. A lot of us bloodsuckers have a habit of either feeling responsibility or soul control or feeling completely helpless. So I think that's control fallacy. Because labeling is is not quite what we're looking for here. I think we're dealing with another control fallacy. Oh, interesting. We actually have some uh, some backstory here. Interesting. Yeah, I was gonna say the first control fallacy. Yeah, uh, I was I was gonna say that first example of uh, control fallacy. Yeah, it matches what was just said, but hold on, I want to see how many pages of uh, diary do we have here? Okay, only three, so let's let's read more about Sam here, because I, I want to know more about Sam. So it's been a week since I boarded the Monster of the Seas cruise ship, and I gotta say, I feel finer than frog hair. Okay, that's a sentence. Uh, people here are eating and screwing like there's no tomorrow on account of the fact that we're in the middle of the ocean. Yep, that's what a cruise ship hat tends to be. I drank from more necks in the last week than I can count. And since the ship's open all night, I rode a water slide for the first time in my own life. People were laughing at me for saying yeehaw, but what else do you say to an experience like that? Okay. March 22nd. Landed in Rotterdam the other day, in Amsterdam now arranging transportation for my coffin. Did some vampire sightseeing. Apparently this place has been accepting of heathens like us for a long time. I went to a vampire coffee shop 
They funnel in the stoners from upstairs to a secret club and everyone has themselves a grand old time. Gave me the munchies something fierce. I could go for some blood chips. Extra sodium if you please. Mm. So it's interesting that, um, you know, it again, in vampire, a lot of what vampire mythos and a lot of vampire media does is whatever drugs or whatever's in the blood that you're drinking um, kind of affects what you what you take in. So also Shira Luffy, hello. If uh, if you drink from a stoner, it, you're probably going to get the munchies. So I see what they're doing there. Uh, April 9th, uh, writing from Berlin, Berlin today. I head to Let's Pig tomorrow night, but I figured I should check things out here. They got a club here where people are up all night doing all kind of kink, kinky stuff. I'm pushing a quarter of millennium in years, but these folk could give me some lessons. And did. Good job, Sam. You tried something new. Good job. Uh, met some fine folk, too. Apparently they've got a nice art scene here. There's even some local funding for video game development. Ain't this some kind of world? I can't believe that people are still playing Star Invaders and whatnot. I like it here. I don't even have to speak German. Love it. But yeah, that is, uh, that is a control fallacy, Mr. Andro. Oh, uh, you're testing me, ain't you? That's a control fallacy right there. Well done, Samuel. I am indeed very powerful. The cosmos holds no awareness of Andromachos. Of course, as you expertly pointed out with your analogy about the man at the bottom of a whiskey bottle, a control fallacy can be positive or negative. Listen to my next few statements and try to find a control fallacy. Simply let me continue if you do not detect one. Okay. The sun will eventually burn out. I will roam a cold, dead earth, and there is little I can do about it. That seems like Nosferatu thinking, but it's also the truth. My kitty cat died. I shall be lonely forever. That's Nosferatu thinking. Pay attention, Samuel. We are considering only control fallacies. Okay, so we're only doing we're only myself. doing control fallacies. Okay. My kitty cat died. I shall be lonely forever. Okay. I shall never feel the warm sun upon my skin again. I shall never feel the warm sun upon my skin again. Hmm. You didn't catch my control fallacy. This song yeah, I was gonna say, all right, so... Out. I will roam a cold, dead earth, and there is little I can do about it. I, I'm wondering here. I'm wondering. Because... Because that's a fact. It... This is the tricky part, but I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna, we're just gonna go down the line here. Well, that sounds like one of them control fallacies. With all eternity, heck, <laughs> I think you could do something to save the sun. I applaud your optimism and ambition, Samuel, but some things we must be prepared to accept, and the death of the sun is one of them. But let us continue. My kitty cat died. I shall be lonely forever. That's Nosferatu thinking. I shall never feel the warm sun upon my skin again. I shall never feel the warm sun upon my skin again. Well, that's a control fallacy, ain't it? I mean, you could feel the sun if you really, really wanted to. There is a significant difference between enjoying the warm sun and being burnt into ash. Burnt to ash. Okay, so I guess it's the kitty it one, then. It is not a distortion to acknowledge indisputable sources of harm. Let us try again. You didn't catch my control fallacy. All right, yeah, so we're going to loop, and my then... Kitty cat died. I shall be lonely forever. Uh, I'm sorry about your sweet kitty, but you could always pick up a new one. Or there's lots of them just waiting for a loving home, so you don't need to be lonely. I almost think that unless there's a health mechanic here, it might pay off to just not do the correct choice right away, because we get more dialogue from everything. <laughs> it was just an example, Samuel. Well spotted, but I do speak from experience. I felt this way once when a pharaoh I was dating had our cat mummified. Damn, Andro, you go from Roman Emperor to Pharaoh. I see you. I see you. I went into a murderous depression that nearly decimated the continent. But I had the power to help myself all along by adopting a new friend in need of a home. Oh, dang, don't let me get on your bad side. I doubt you shall see it, Samuel. Did you have more revelations to tell me about? He enjoys the finer things in our life. I think that's all of them. Or at least the ones that were the most obvious to me. That you recognize the concept of cognitive distortions at all is most impressive, Samuel. 
What took me nearly three millennia to understand took you nearly two centuries. Oh, come on, you're just flattering me. I'm just a dope stumbling his way through one life. Are you now? Tell me, Samuel, what kind of cognitive distortion are you exhibiting when you call yourself a dope? Well, that's immediately labeled. Yeah, I'm doing some labeling. I gotta watch myself, huh? As long as we retain any humanity, we will have cognitive distortions. What we are aiming for is not to become perfect beings, but to understand and accept ourselves. As long as we can recognize cognitive distortions, we can address our real challenges. One cannot drink blood from a straw man, after all. Huh. I ain't never heard that one before, but I like it. If it helps solidify the concept in your mind, then I am well satisfied. I know you came to learn from me, so I will do my best to honor your good intentions. Let us ensure that you understand the concepts of labeling, control fallacies, and Nosferatu thinking. Okay, so now we're going to have a test. I will give you a series of statements, and each one will contain a cognitive distortion for you to identify. I will begin. If I invite over my vampire friends, I know I'm going to have to deal with guano all over the place when they turn into bats at the end of the night. <laughs> that's uh, that's Nosferatu thinking, I think. Well, that ain't right. He's acting powerless, like a man clinging to the whiskey. Oh, bottle. then that's control. What Andrew Mako say that distortion was? If I invite over my vampire is that, friends, is that a control? I well, okay, I gotta, I gotta look at this again. Hold all on. Over the place when they turn into bats at Hold the end on. of the night. Because I think I, I'm mixing up control fallacy and Nosferatu thinking. So Nosferatu thinking is two extremes, or that it's black and white. Okay. And then control fallacy, which is probably what it is when you're either in so you're feeling responsibility or soul control or feeling completely helpless. So that's a control fallacy. Okay. So yeah, it's control fallacy. That there's a control fallacy, sir. You're acting like you've got no control, but you could lay down some ground rules for guests or some newspaper. Or express concern to my friends that they have not been toilet trained. <laughs> that they have not been toilet trained. trained. I am Andromachus, the ancient darkness, the scourge of the Mediterranean, the mortal's bane. Now, can you imagine just introducing yourself? Or I am Dramomachos, the ancient darkness, the law, the scourge of the Mediterranean, and mortal's bane. Just imagine just introducing yourself like that. That is... Well, that's definitely some intense labeling. Those are some hard names to get over. You are not wrong. Those names followed me for millennia. It was most stifling. Let me try another then. If my club's revenues do not significantly increase, I will end up living on the street. Yeah, this is this is definitely yeah, this this is when you labeled there's uh when you label them the big bad evil guy. Yeah. To be fair, there's nothing to stop you, ELH. I mean that there's got to be news for out to thinking. There's a huge space between making a ton of profit and living on the street. Indeed, you are correct. I run my club at a considerable loss, but 3,000 years of banking interest means that money is not really an object to me anyway. Yeah, he's he's got enough money that he can do what he wants. Samuel, now I am not only intrigued by you, but also impressed. I would very much like to teach you my ways, but I must demand something of you first. Um... Hold on, Andrew. Where's this going? Anything. I'm here to learn. You must receive therapy yourself. I will not have you seeing clients without a commitment to your own mental health. Oh, uh, now, hold on just a minute. I, I don't know that I need therapy. I'm feeling pretty good about myself these days. Samuel, we all need therapy to live in this world. You have been speaking in cognitive distortions since the moment you walked into my office. Okay, so what they're doing here... And again, this is another example of game-based learning. There, there were times where Sam definitely was speaking in cognitive distortions, but Andro wasn't really pointing them out. I mean, he pointed them out once, but it's interesting that they make the claim here, and I guess it's not really a claim, it's, it's a fact, where getting therapy even when you feel good is important. Um, because it helps you process and deal with the world around you. 
Like you might be feeling amazing one day and you go into your therapist and you say, I feel great. I feel amazing. Um, but that that's just, I don't want to say it's a temporary thing, but it's, 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 it's one of those things where I want to say this. See, Orfish, that might be the case where you're from. Cause I, I think, aren't you in, aren't you in the EU? Am I remembering that correctly? I might be wrong. Um, but I mean, at least all the therapists I've ever been to, um, they've never made me feel like I had to take therapy. Like they were just like, yeah, you know, well, whenever you feel like meeting, we'll meet. Like they weren't like, oh, we must meet every week. We must meet and talk about everything every week. Um, at least, and maybe I just had the right therapist. Who knows? Um, but relevant to this, it's interesting that Andro is, you know, saying that to Sam at this moment. So let's let's see where this goes. I have. I didn't even notice. They are most insidious, but I am here to help you identify and challenge them. Oh, that's what you meant, Orfish, that therapists themselves are required and encouraged to say therapy. I understand now. And yes, Orfish, that is a excellent thing to say because therapists hear and deal with a lot of trauma and they help other people deal with that trauma but just hearing about that trauma is something that you have to deal with in your own way so therapists getting therapy is a good thing um so yes well done there orfish well done uh let's see uh, let me see. Slacker. I'm reminded of a line from Abyss Odyssey that if you hear your, uh, if you're playing as the ghost monk and you meet the final boss, he tries to taunt you by saying, I am almighty. I am power itself. And the GM simply replies, and I am vengeance. Come to strip that power away. That is, I, I love games that have, uh, situational or character based lines, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of those things where if you just introduce yourself with a thousand titles, it's it's amazing. Let's see. You have walked alone for too long, Samuel. Allow me to share my experience with you. Well, all right, if you say so. I appreciate you taking the time to work on this old cowpoke. Yes, at one of my old jobs, we were encouraged and provided anonymous people to talk to. We had to deal with people from all walks of life and a lot of them at their lowest. Yeah, and that's something where, you know, if there's anything that anybody who's still watching this on YouTube, because I think I am going to put this on YouTube. Um, one of the things that I would encourage is you don't necessarily have to be at your lowest to get therapy, but hitting your low or hitting hitting that bottom is what motivates people to go to therapy. But a lot of good can come from being proactive about it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's again one of those things where it's like, you know, a doctor can heal thyself to some degree, but you still need other people to truly, truly deal with what you're hearing and what you're going through. We have all the time in the world, Samuel. But for now, you must be eager for something fresh. Please, dance, drink your fill. We will begin tomorrow. Okay, then. Well, sir, it's been an honor. You don't have to call me sir, you know. All right, then, Andromachos. Andromachos. Hey, Andromachos. Andromachos. <laughs> <laughs> Just call me Andy. Andy, his new name is Andy. Got it. <laughs> All right, Andy. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Uh oh. Okay, there we go. All the immortals sweating, blood pumping. I am thirsty. But there ain't no power on this earth that'll get me on the dance floor. All right, let me check and see because I want to see if we can save here. All right, so save. All right, we gotta save. Maybe I'll see if the bartender's got anything for me. If it isn't Clint Eastwood again, how'd it go, cowboy? <laughs> if it ain't Clint Eastwood again. All right, Crimson, I see you. Seems I'll be sticking around. Guess I better get used to things around here. Good to hear. About time someone helped Andy with his work. Seems you vampires have a lot of problems to fix. Name's Crimson, by the way. And Crimson isn't a vampire. Like, okay. I mean, she's definitely got the get up for it. 
fine meeting you, Crimson. How do you know so much about what Andy's doing? Yeah, she might be. A, she's got to be a ghoul. If ghoul systems work in this universe, she's got to be a ghoul. If if that even is a thing in this universe. Pillow talk. I'm his blood partner. Oh. Oh. So blood partner is what we're calling it. Oh. No shit. How's a mortal get hooked up with an ancient vampire? I'm a rock climber. I stumbled into one of his lairs in Madagascar, found a cave while climbing a mountain, and there he was, naked in a hot tub. Okay, okay, hold on. I gotta, I, I, I gotta process that mental image. So, you know, you're rock climbing. You're, you're doing your thing. You're climbing a mountain, and then you find a cave, and in the cave, you see uh, not only a naked vampire. But a naked vampire in a hot tub in the middle of a cave while you're climbing a mountain. That is a mental image I was not expecting to have today or at all. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a normal Tuesday, apparently. Dang. <laughs> Must have been a sight. You ain't kidding, cowboy. Didn't expect a luxury apartment with a gorgeous naked vampire inside of a mountain. I don't think any of us were Crimson. Let's let's be honest. I don't think any of us were. We hit it off, and he asked me to come back here with him. I like an adventure, so I said, "What the hell? I'll date the gorgeous Dracula." But what are you doing talking to me, cowboy? The blood's running hot on the dance floor, and these kids don't mind a little biting. There ain't no way I'm dancing. There's gotta be a better way to get some fresh to drink. Aw, Sam, why are you not dancing? Come on, Sam. You don't need to. You know, you, you don't need to, to put yourself down like that. You can dance. Reinhardt, look. It's the sexy old guy again. You should buy us a drink, old guy. You'll probably get lucky. Actually, you will definitely get lucky. Again, we're, we're back with Maxie and Reinhardt, who are desperate for a third at this point. Well, uh, pleasures of the flesh ain't exactly what I'm after tonight. That's because you haven't experienced these pleasures with us yet. Buy us a drink and you will discover great satisfaction, Bions. Uh, that, no. Alcohol's bad for them, no. They're not your type. That's a lie. They're my type. Uh, you don't have the money. Tell them they can support themselves. Yeah, they definitely want the D, the, the Dracula. Um, like I feel like Sam, Sam would say this, but ELH, yeah, I like the fact these are all rejections. I think I'm just going to straight up say we don't have the money. I think that's probably a true statement here. I ain't buying you a drink. All I got are good old fashioned dollars. I like American money. All we have on our money are buildings. You have all the sexy old men. Okay, Maxie's into old men. Okay. All right. All right, Maxie. Sure. Nothing wrong with that. Oh. All right, I'll bite. Which of them old men are sexy? Oh, okay. We're going to find out right now. I like Hamilton. His posture is just so powerful. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, just the mental image of just Hamilton's posture being so powerful. <laughs> Again, not something I was expecting to read. There is a dollar coin that has Eisenhower's face on it. Oh, you are right. Eisenhower is, uh, how do you Americans say, uh, a snack? An Eisen... Okay, again, another sentence that I was not mentally prepared for. Okay. Eisenhower being a snack. Okay. I get it. You like older men. Oh, am I really going to have to go through all of these? Okay. Uh, I feel like we're going to have to do this, but let me... 
Let me, let me, let me tell them they can support themselves. I ain't buying you a drink. I think I'd be insulting your economic status. Mein Lieber, don't worry about us. We just like to feel special. We have lucrative jobs in IT. We have lucrative jobs in IT. Well, Reinhardt, I hope that you're not dealing with crowd. Well, if you're in IT, you are dealing with CrowdStrike right now. So my condolences. In fact, what are you doing at a club with Maxi? Like, shouldn't you be fixing Windows computers right now? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you know? Shouldn't you? Shouldn't you be doing something? Yeah, get to work. You know, we we got CrowdStrike to fix. What what are you doing, Reinhardt? Oh yeah. Well, maybe you can help me. See, my printer died again. <laughs> Getting real tired of these things. Oh, please, we are here to party. But get a laser printer. Well, thanks for the tip. That ink seems to be more valuable than blood. As it is, ink is legitimately more costly than eat a thing of blood. Uh, I think yeah, I think we're just gonna have to go through all of these. I ain't buying you a drink. This stuff's terrible for you. Are you making a joke? We are at a bar. It's okay. He's just trying to be protective, aren't you, Opa? <laughs> you know, I think the drinks here ain't strong enough for you two. Yeah, and we actually have to say they're not my type. I ain't buying you a drink. You ain't exactly my type. Oh, we don't want to marry you. We just want to have fun with you. You kids are too much. Oh, these kids just ain't gonna leave me alone. Oh, um, we have to buy them a drink anyway. Okay. Uh, Stop teasing the cowboy, Kinder. They're just messing with you. Drinks are free here. Oh, drinks are free here. Well, that was an awkward conversation then. Dang, really? I ain't never been to a saloon with free hooch. Call it a drink exchange. Huh. So, everyone here knows they might be sharing blood? Only as long as there's consent. We like to create a safe environment here. Why don't you take Reinhard and Maxie here back to the kink room? Okay. Um... I might have to censor what's coming, but let's see what happens. <laughs> Wait, kink room? You're not in Kansas anymore, cowboy. We are not afraid of sex here. I'm from Missouri, but uh, point taken. Nobody has to do anything they don't want to do in there. Just have fun and drink your fill, handsome. I'm sure mm -hmm. I'll be seeing. Now I know you. that this doesn't have sexual content in it because that that was not something that was warning. Maxi, Reinhard, this is one of our special customers. I hope that oh, so, anything. I'm vampire. I'm thinking we are all getting lucky then. My neck scrubs with anticipation. Okay, Maxie's into getting bit. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Guess I'm going to a kink room then. Thanks, Crimson. I knew a man who was this much leather couldn't be boring. Oh boy. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you got me pegged. No, phrasing, Sam, phrasing, phrasing. For the love of God, are we still doing phrasing? Is that what we are doing now? Give me the document and I will sign myself up for it. I really ain't in Missouri no more. Uh, look, I'm more into biting. Oh, your teeth look perfect. Are you going to bite me if it's those? That's the plan. Who's going first? Oh, me, me, me. We'll step right on up. Oh, God. Oh, does that seem good, Angerful? Das ist sick. I I think that basically translates to that feels heavenly. I think I think that's what it translates to. Oh, that's a good thing. Is it my turn yet? Well, sure thing. Come on over. Oh, Reinhardt, so hot old vampire wore me out. Me too, Maxi. I feel as though I have set up a mail server. Okay. All right. Oh, that's right, Kern. I always forget that you, you speak German a little bit. Yeah, I forgot that. So this is a dig, a deep cut for anybody who's worked in IT before. Um, setting up a mail server is, uh, from what I remember, because I had to set up a couple. Um, it's not particularly difficult to set up a mail server, but it's... Uh, it's, uh, 
it's not great. So that's that's a deep cut for anybody who's worked in IT. Reinhard, mein Zucker Fledermaus. Ich bin so müde, um sexy zu sein. That is German. That is indeed German. That we probably don't want to translate, so let's just keep going before I get banned for toss. I will get us a taxi cab, Liebchen. Und du, Cowboy? Next time we will talk about that thing you mentioned earlier. Oh, we're, we're going to be talking about pegging. Oh, okay, sure. Oh, uh, yeah, sure thing, fella. You can help me with my new laser printer. Now that I've had something to drink, I should probably get to my coffin. Yeah, I'm curious. Samuel, wait a moment. I see you got your fill. Are you heading out? Yeah, I figure I could use some shut eye. I locked up my coffin over at the storage center. Storage center? Please, you can use my guest coffin. I insist. You must be well rested for the challenges ahead. Guess I got a big night tomorrow, huh? I should get a good day's sleep. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Please, follow me. Andy oh, being a bro. This is mighty plush. Guess it's one of them smart coffins. Oh my god, it's one of those smart coffins? Like... Oh my god, it's got a little TV. It's got a plush interior. It... This is amazing. This... This game has so much flavor to it. Like, the guest coffin? Like... This is this is great. I love everything about this. Let's see what's on TV. Hey, I remember this movie. We were so proud to finally get some representation. Are they really going to show the whole movie? I know it's public domain, so we should be okay. I'm not sure I should stay up watching movies, though. Well, ain't much else to do in here. I think it's about time I hit the hay. Hope that I'm is amazing that they always. had the public uh I mean I cut it short because I didn't want to get bought by you mm, excuse me, bought by YouTube, but I wonder if you could watch that entire flight. Samuel, good evening. I hope you slept well. You know what? Let's actually let's drop a save. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Like the dead, as they say. I was hoping to save you some breakfast, but I've already sent them on their way. Hmm. Like the darkness? I know the darkness does it. I know um, Alan Wake 2 does it, where there's an entire feature film you can sit and watch. Um, there's that one Rick and Morty game whose name I can't remember. The, the shooter Rick and Morty game. Uh, I know you can watch an entire film in that. And I think there's even achievements in Alan Wake 2 in this, uh, the Rick and Morty game. Or at least by the same people who made Rick and Morty. Oh, that's all right. I'm still pretty full from last night. <laughs> Them goth types were practically throwing themselves at me. I am not surprised. Perhaps I should be concerned that some of my guests will follow you home. Well, gosh, if I still had mortal circulation, I'd be blushing. Why are you so embarrassed, Samuel? Ah, hell. Guess we should just save it for therapy, huh? We gonna get started now? If you like. Why not? I'm eager to get going. Let loose, Doc. Very well. Let's start with the first question any therapist asks, then. What brought you to me? Why is becoming a therapist so important to you? Well, gosh, I remember what it was like. Being all angry, hungry, and scared all the time. <sighs> it ain't no way to live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When I see vampires acting the way I used to, I just need to show them there's more to unlife. And why is that up to you? You, of all people, know how lost our kind can be. Preying on the weak, dating mortal high schoolers. I've got to make them see their potential. That's what I'm here for. I know it. So, that, if you didn't catch it, was a, was a, was a jab at Twilight. But, uh, yeah, it's, um... You know, Sam's got a very Sam's got a very noble goal here. And good for him. You know what? We need more people like Sam. Or I guess more vampires like Sam? You know what I mean. That is a lot of responsibility to place on yourself. <laughs> you got a funny look in your eye. Am I doing one of them distortion things? You are most perceptive. Yes. Perhaps you can tell me what it is. When you say you are here to make vampires see the world differently, in what way are you distorting reality? So it's not labeling. 
It's not Nosferatu thinking. I think it's control fallacy. Because we're not really making anybody... Yeah, it's. I think it's control fallacy. Well, I guess that's a control fallacy, right? we fallacy, got it right. right. I can't assume I'll be able to help other vampires the way I was helped. Very good, Samuel. Control fallacies are hard to avoid when one feels strongly about something. Interesting. Your fate is not to transform every vampire you ever meet, even those who are your clients. You will do what you can do, and that is enough. But I am eager to learn how you develop this desire to help our kin find a different way of thinking. Well, like I told you when I first V-mailed you, I was a real nasty son of a bitch when I first became a vampire. Mm -hmm. When I look back and see what a no-account piece of shit I was, I ain't nothing but embarrassed. Now that is labeling. It all seems pretty stupid to me now. Here we are living forever and all we can do is kill? That's the dumbest thing I ever did here. I am going to stop you for a moment. Stupid, no-account piece of shit, nasty son of a bitch, dumbest thing. Do you hear the way you are talking about yourself? With respect, sir, I earned all them names. I killed women and children. Half the ghost towns out west are my doing. I didn't think of nobody but myself. All right, so we have some world building here where apparently in the Wild West, the ghost towns are Sam's fault. Interesting. Pretend you are my therapist. If I sat here and called myself a no-account piece of shit, what would you tell me? Well, I mean, that's labeling. But Andy, Andy, let's be clear here. You've dated a pharaoh. You've dated a Roman emperor, and you have a random mansion in the middle of a cave in Madagascar. I think you're doing pretty damn well for yourself, Andy, but let us we know it's labeling. I'd say you were doing some labeling, and I guess I'd tell you to look at yourself a little more kindly. Extend the same compassion to yourself then, Samuel. How are you to move on from being a nasty son of a bitch if you are labeling yourself? Yeah, don't forget. Yeah, you're right, Techno. We can't forget the hot tub. If you wish to be a guide to other vampires, you must start with compassion for them and for yourself. So that is something very important here where they are saying that you can't help others. Like, the saying is you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. It's the same sort of thing here where you can't have compassion or show compassion or help with compassion in someone else unless you show it to yourself. How does he even have power in that cave anyway? Um, probably solar pan uh, solar, if I had to guess. He's probably got solar pow power because he's on the top of a mountain. So, yeah, I I'm thinking solar, if I had to guess. So, now that you've gotten all that horrible name calling out of the way, please tell me, how did you find your sense of purpose? Well, I was on the run, you see. The Wild West was ending, and the Pinkertons were starting to get the better of my gang. I went into hiding and found a strange group of folks out in the country. <laughs> they knew I was an outlaw right away, but they didn't judge me for it. They didn't even care that I was a vampire. They welcomed me like a friend, even shared their blood with me. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to appreciate the beauty of the night, and I started seeing things I'd never noticed before. Such as? They taught me my letters, philosophy, and how to question things instead of being scared of them. I think about them every day of my own life. They somehow freed themselves of all the judgments of the time. And Pinkerton's were not just for threatening D and D fans. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a that's a deep cut. Though wasn't it uh, wasn't it magic that they sent the Pinkertons that that Hasbro and Wizard of the Coast sent Pinkertons? Wasn't that a a magic release that they sent them for? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was magic. Yeah, it was magic. Um, where they they were legally sold a box early and they posted on social media and yeah legit pinkerton showed up yeah it, it was magic i'm pretty dang sure it was magic these must have been the 19th century american transcendentalists yes oh so the pinkertons so for those who aren't in the state who aren't in the states basically pinkertons were uh, well they were a lot of things um pinkertons were basically Hired muscle is the easiest reduction I can do, where you could you could send out Pinkertons to muscle someone, and usually these were things that companies would hire to deal with mercenaries, deal with outlaws. You know, they were they were kind of a police. Yeah, Kern, they were kind of a police force. 
Um, but not all Pinkertons were with actual authorities, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like union busting. That's that's another example where Pinkertons. Yes, professional thugs is a good way to think about them. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, private securities. Yeah, private security, professional thugs, kind of the same thing if you think about it. But yeah, let's uh, let's keep going. What's uh, what Sam got in stereo? Yes, sir. I'm glad I died when I did, because their like just don't exist no more. Yep, that's true. We don't really have the transcendentalist movement anymore. Once my community died out, I started walking. That was something else they taught me how to do. There ain't nothing like having a walk and a think. So it's something here that um, there is, and I think I talked about this, what was it, yesterday or the day before? Um, where going on a walk, going on a drive, disconnecting yourself, and just removing yourself from the environment that you're sitting in can... It can drastically change and help with your thinking. Like if you're ever stuck on a problem, getting up and taking a break and going for a walk or going for a drive or just getting out of your house, out of your cubicle, whatever, there's a measurable effect where you will find the answer much easier than if you just sat down and forced yourself to think through the problem. So once again, good job, good job, Sam. I walked in nature for about 90 years and just took in all the grace and beauty of my country. I guess I was kind of selfish, though. I should have been helping other vampires the way the transcendentalists helped me. Why? Yeah, it's a good question. Why? <laughs> Why waste 90 years walking when I should have been helping others? Seems pretty obvious to me. I could have done a lot of good in that time. But your should turns that which you could find fulfilling into a duty. You create an extrinsic motivator. Good statements are another cognitive distortion, something created by your own mind. Nature asks almost nothing of you. I like it, so we now have should statements to work with here. Interesting. Even if your should comes from a place of good, it creates undue pressure. And what do we do once we are pressured? We resent the shoulds. We procrastinate. And as you know, we have a lot of time to procrastinate. Hmm. So I think where they're going to go with this, and I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just make a guess here, but should, how do I want to say this? Telling yourself, I should do this, or I should do that. Like, let's say, for example, I should stream today as a statement. Well, that puts pressure on me that says, hey, I should stream and I should I should do things. I should, you know, share this game with the world kind of a thing. And that creates pressure of, oh, well, if I don't stream, then I'm doing something wrong. Or if I don't have a good stream, then I'm not doing a good job. Like it it creates, as he just said, uh, it creates the desire to procrastinate, the desire to cancel, to um, you know, the performance anxiety. So it's very interesting how they've they've introduced the concept of shoulds here. You got that right. Why do today what you could do next century? Exactly. Should statements remove the intrinsic joy from that which you find fulfilling. Now, again, a very powerful statement there. Uh, hold on, though. Ain't there some things we really should do? Good question, Sam. Of course, there are things we must do. But nature herself tells us what they are. We invent the rest. Here, let me give you an exercise. Listen closely. See whether you can find the should statement that is a distortion. Okay, so we're gonna get a series of should statements that uh, we have to find which one's the distortion. I should go to the vampire dentist. You know what they say. If you have bad fangs, you get bad blood. Okay, that's not it, even though that's a funny statement. If you have bad fangs, you get bad blood. Okay, interesting. I should drink blood today. No, nope, that's not it either. I should take my blood partner Crimson out on a date. That is what it is. Saying you should take Crimson out on a date is a should statement. <laughs> You've turned something you want to do into something you have to do. Mm -hmm. That's right, Samuel. You know, I couldn't be more pleased with you. Your time in nature was clearly well spent. Well, thanks, I suppose. Uh, but if you don't mind my saying so, I hope you're treating that mortal lady right. I think Crimson's doing well. You know, the fact that... Crimson went to, to from being a mountain climber to a bartender in this here bar. I, 
Well, uh, I think y'all are uh, doing quite well, if I do say so myself. And I think I'm going to drop into a western accent of some kind, or a southern accent of some kind, and I don't mean to be doing so, but Sam gets me thinking this way. So good job there, Sam. <laughs> Thank you. Please, ask her yourself. I imagine she would share her blood with you. You look like her type. Ah, so Andy is, is Polly. Good job, Andy. Oh, hold on. I've only been in Europe for a couple of days. I ain't gonna go after my teacher's girlfriend. She does what she wishes, and that is why I chose her as my blood partner. Very good relationship here. You know what? I, Andy, Andy's a stand-up guy. Samuel, even if it beats no longer, you have a good heart. I think you will be an excellent therapist. <laughs> so far, that good heart of mine hasn't amounted to much, but I'm willing to give it my best shot. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a simple country-bred vampire. I, uh, I come from the humble old west, and, you know, I mosey on into town and just try to do the best things I can do to, uh, make sure this, uh, fair city prospers and whatnot. And all I ask in return is for some simple blood. Blood that isn't necessarily going to be missed. Oh, uh, so the funny thing is, is I usually actually use that accent uh, when I play D and D, because I I usually try to give my D and D characters a different inflection or tone or voice. That way, people know when I'm talking in and out of character. I don't really do a whole lot of accent work on Star Trek, but um, I think we all know I have like three voices. I've got Sean Connery kinda. I have Slavic, and I have Southern. So, you know. Oh, uh, let me see here. Uh, can I do a caveman voice? That's a good question, Orfish. Me just unfrozen caveman, world confused and frightened. But even simple caveman see prosecution misrepresenting client. Yeah, yeah. All right, I love it. I love it. You are uncomfortable with praise, aren't you, Samuel? Every time I say something positive, you find a way to negate it. Yeah, that's a good point, Andy. Yeah, Sam is is definitely doing what I I tend to do, and uh, you know, say something positive and negating it. Yeah, that's I do that myself. I just don't think I should be doing any bragging. I spent my first fifty years killing. I spent the next ninety walking in the woods. I've tried to walk a better path since then, but I ain't no saint, Andy. I did not say you were. Having met several so-called saints, I can attest that none of them were either. I understand your discomfort, Samuel. I, too, have done terrible things that I cannot erase. But is erasing the good I have done worthwhile? Well, I guess when you put it like that, it sounds kind of silly. Hmm. It's another cognitive distortion, one that mortal psychologists call disqualifying the positive. Yep, and it's something I do a hell of a lot. It is something that I personally struggle with, but I'm aware of it and I'm working on it. I understand that the actions of your past are difficult to bear, but what we are here to do is accept reality with both its positive and negative aspects. I am not saying that you should disqualify your negative actions, but merely note when you disqualify the positive ones. And that is, again, a very powerful tool that once you recognize that you're doing it, you can change your thinking to be better. Let us try an exercise. See whether you can challenge me when I disqualify my positive deeds. I am Andromochos, one of the most powerful vampires alive. Nope, that's not Before it. Before I became the vampire I am now, I did exceptionally terrible things. That's not it. I have defiled the innocent. I have killed countless people. That's not it. The good I now do pales in comparison to the evil I have done. That's it. That's the one. You're literally disqualifying the positive by comparing it to the evil stuff you've done. Well done, Samuel. I believe the recognition of this distortion will serve you well when you start to see clients tomorrow. Whoa, tomorrow? I only just started learning these here cognitive distortion things. I will, of course, be with you. You needn't worry. I can sense your instincts and will help you. But tomorrow, I just don't feel ready yet. My friend, we are never truly ready. But if it would ease your concerns, we can practice with further examples. Would that be helpful to you? Uh, that's a good question. 
I think we're okay. I, I think we're about as ready as we we're, we're going to be. I think I'm good. All right, Samuel. You must be hungry now. I suggest you get the liter inside you. We have a big night tomorrow. Uh, how much is a liter? <laughs> Just get enough to drink, Samuel. We will not be able to work if you are hungry or tired. Now, please excuse me. I do have a date with Crimson tonight. I suspect I shall not return until nearly morning. Oh, yeah, of course. Now, I hope you have a nice night out, Mr. Andrew, uh, Andy. You as well, Samuel. Rest in peace. Rep. All right. Ah, Samuel. All Glad right. To see you and I think, I think that is where is we're way. going to call it for today before we jump into another thing. But yeah, uh, we're definitely going to be continuing this. Um, I'm very intrigued by this game, and I very much am liking what it's putting down. So we'll probably continue this game on Monday and Tuesday. And yeah, YouTube, hopefully you are seeing this. Uh, I will do it in kind of hour to hour points. And yeah, I, I'm liking what this game is doing. It is a very cool game. Uh, you can get it on Steam. Uh, it literally just came out, I think, a few days ago. Um, but yeah, definitely would recommend.